look at this magic quince tree. Isn't that fantastic? I can show you how to cook these. See, they're, they're definitely right now. Mm. Yeah. So here we are in uh, this wonderful Wiltshire town of Mere, in Harry's kitchen. Have you been here before? I've never been here. At last it's happened. And we're really enjoying the smell of the quinces recently harvested from Harry's garden. But we're not really here to talk about fruit and vegetables. They're more interesting, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I remember quite vividly, the f one of the early times I met you was in Maida Vale BBC Studios when... I was assisting Andrew Davis on that recording and performance of The Mask of Orpheus we did in the Festival Hall. I was sitting back away from the orchestra a little way and you came up to me and I thought, oh goodness, what's he going to say? And I was pretty green and in awe of you, of course, oh, of course. as I still am. And uh, he, you came up and you said, leant in conspiratorially to me and said, did I write that? <laughs> and I, it's very interesting now thinking... Because when we showed you the Last Supper <laughs> score an yeah. hour ago, you said, yeah. did I really write that? I mean, looking back at your pieces, uh, do, you, do they kind of disappear from your thoughts? Or what's your... I tell what's you. Your, how do they live with you? I was thinking somebody talking about um, this morning on Radio 4 with Jim Nockerty about a writer. When he starts doing something he said now this time it's going to be perfect and it's going to be marvelous <laughs> and he said and then it, it's a, I think he word, used the word shite <laughs> you know that usually turn, he says yeah. and um, so I'm always surprised um, by a lot of things but in my memory of pieces there are wounds there are piece there are bits in it that I would like to I'd like to a bit of surgery or, or a bit of something or other because there are also moments that I hear in a, in a piece of music and I thought I'll have that <laughs> I mean, you know I'll make more of that that's, yeah. that's good but what is interesting is that very often these wounds that I know about when, it, when I hear it after a period of time you know it's sort of healed yeah, it's less painful. Well, it's, right? But there are others that have developed <laughs> in the meantime. Yeah? Yeah, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. I don't think I've ever I've written anything that if I thought that I thought that I couldn't better by mm. changing it. You yeah. know, I love yeah. a look at that clock. I could make that much more interesting. So Harrison Burt Whistle, one of the world's greatest living composers. Born in 1934 in Accrington, Lancashire. His music is elemental, earthbound, spiritual, passionate, intense. And for me, it's inspirational as a performer to be able to work on his music. As uh, the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra are planning, well, we are doing a performance of The Last Supper, Harry's opera from 2000. So we're just here to uh, talk a little bit around that subject. Well, I'll try to remember. Yes. I mean, I can remember the, the piece. Somebody asked me uh, what it was, and I said, well, uh, my idea was in the first place to write a, a sort of cantata on wheels. <laughs> and the thing, one the thing that fascinated me about the problem with the piece, because I like problems, I like solving problems, there's nothing to do overtly like from the subject matter. So Harry, when you write an opera, is does the stimulus for the subject come from you or from a collaboration it's with always, the writer? It's always come from me. Because I think one of the one of the great things about all your subjects, you know, they're absolutely fundamental human stories. Even when you think about Kong, yeah. Gawain, the Minotaur and The Last Supper, there's yeah. something that connects to uh, and not humanity. a lot of psychology. No, not and not a lot long. of action. Yeah, yeah, no. So what, what is it that really attracts to you about this particular subject? Well, first of all, it's about a lot of men. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, and how do you solve it? Mm. How do you solve... How do you tease out the dramatic implications of the piece? Yes. Because it, uh, on the surface it has problems because it's not overtly no. uh, dramatic. Not at all. 
but it's a pretty interesting idea. First of all, one thing that was at the back of my mind is how you write a piece like this without the crucifixion. Mm. That was one thing. You can't have a thing about the, about the Last Supper without the crucifixion. Mm. That was one thing. And the next idea was that they should enter the disciples are recalled. Mm -hmm. How do you get them on the stage? Why are they there? Mm -hmm. They identify themselves and say yes. who they are. And, and, they, and, and a rather nice thing where where they sort of say, you know, what have you been doing? Yeah, and, and exactly. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. how is it? I mean, I, that sort of... That sort of Thomas is still doubting. Yeah, this Thomas is <laughs> 2, still 2,000 years doubting. later. Yeah, yeah. Because they all, they're all got there, and there's two people missing. Yes. One is Judas, yeah. and the other is Christ. Yeah. And how do you do it? How do you get Judas on? Well, they sing the prayer, our Father, mm -hmm. and um, they kneel to do it. And when they get to the end of it, a voice comes from the back and says, oh, Amen, mm -hmm. and it's Judas. It's Judas yeah. yeah. So, you know, that, I thought that was quite a nice little thing. Uh, how do you get Christ on? Well, he can't sort of come on stage left and say, <laughs> where have you been, boys? <laughs> yeah, how are you doing? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's, but Judas sets up a thing of asking questions, and, and it's a riddle. And, um, and none of them can answer the riddle. And then it becomes, becomes active because they then are, um, he, he is sort of pig in the middle, mm -hmm. is, is Judas. And, and, and uh, as the thing becomes in, intense about, and keeps saying, you know, wrong, wrong, not the right answer, a voice comes in and gives the answer. And in the midst of them, you know, in the, in the mayhem, they become still, and in the middle of them is Christ. Mm -hmm. This actual appearance of Christ is a crucial, dramatic, and spiritual kind yeah. of centre of the piece. Yeah. Actually, it doesn't come on for quite some time That's in the piece. Right. It would seem that I'm sort of interested in the riddle in, in dramatically, but um, it was very un an unconscious element in the thing, in that I have a, ri a riddle in Punch and Judy, and I have a riddle in Gawain. I am the ghost of you, of a century. The other interesting question, I suppose, to ask is, who is the ghost? She's us. She's, she's us. Yeah, oh. she's, she an, she's there to answer. She's asking the questions from... From but, humanity. And, and she's a woman as well. Which she's, I mean, for many reasons, but just the thing of getting... How you get, want to get a woman, just the, the voice. So she's as different from the male. So that contrast yeah. is important. Yeah. When, you, when you're writing, do you see the dramatic potential of everything and yes. you have visual yeah. you have she had visual images of how yeah. these things could be presented yeah i mean the thing about um dare i mention it is the mask of orpheus it's been such a long time since i've seen it <laughs> a production has developed in my head <laughs> you know and wow. it's as if i've seen it yeah and, and again so. just from the perspective of a composer do you think people pay enough attention to your demands w within the score when they present your pieces on stage or oh, sometimes are they so. I thought, yeah I, I mean but you do sometimes playing. have disappointed disappointing experiences what in opera, in opera. oh yeah. god i've seen some of the worst performances of punch and judy you can imagine yeah i sit sat there with my head in my hands mm -hmm. and saying you know your your life is a mistake i'm a serious just go back to our current topic, Last Supper. The interesting use of the chorus in this piece, in that you have a pre-recorded group of female singers. Mm -hmm. How? What? Again, what's their function? It's quite interesting in the libretto how they they say something in Latin and then it's repeated sometimes by the some of the, the disciples well, well, in I English. Well, I call it an so angel on. chorus. An I angel mean, it's chorus. something in the air, yeah. and, and it's a reverberation. Instrumentally. Your music is often very dramatic. In the Last Supper, we have duetting groups. Of, yeah, I uh, don't remember that. How did that dra dramatic scenario come to you? I don't know. I'm probably thinking about Bach a little bit. Ah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Again, with thinking of the uh, chorales and the passions. That's yeah. right, yeah. I mean, that stylization, mm. that formality, is that I wanted to write a formal, yeah. I wanted to write a formal piece. Mm -hmm. um, and a little bit like the ritual of, say, the, the pairs of disciples coming on yeah, one by one, uh, two right. by two yeah, at the, yeah, at the yeah. beginning. So that's been a sort of issue in, or a, a something, not very so, uh, people always said my music is ritual and that, but it, I've never thought of it like that. I mean, I think it is. It's something which is, which is in the nature of the, like the wood, um, mm. the grain, and that formality is certainly in in mm -hmm. Punch and Judy, and it's certainly in the Mask of mm. Orpheus. I mean, I feel that the thing that people call ritual mm. in your music gives a very clear sense of structure, mm. and that is, you yeah. know, when we're listening it's to complex a, music, well, it's structure a can help. Of foreground. A lot. Yeah. yeah, I think about that in everything I write. I'm always conscious about where the foreground is. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, what is secondary? Mm -hmm. My sense of orchestration is very basic. When people talk about the orchestra, very good orchestration, it's when it's atmospheric and like Debussy. Yes. Yeah, yes, and, that's but that's only one way of, yeah. of, uh, of me. I think if I were a painter, I would have quite a, a very bright brush. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would mix paints too much, mm -hmm. or so that you would know how to contrast. Yeah. You see that picture of Sonia Delaunay down there. I feel myself belonging very much to sort of 1906 modernism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another feature of uh, Last Supper is the orchestration, where you use the there accordion. Are no violins. And there are no violins. Yeah. Again, talking about instrumental characters, you use the symbol and very effectively in other pieces. Yeah, do I use the symbol? No, in not in this one. No, but the accordion you. maybe is your yeah, exotic. It, yeah, um, it, it, it's absolutely on the side. It's like the olive in the uh, The kernel. Gin, in the oh, in the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a little uh, piquant yeah, flavoring, yeah, 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 right. which colors, yeah. colors the piece. And why no violins? I mean, that is quite a significant I mean, it's made the violin players in, in the BBC Scottish very happy because they have a, a free week. Oh, good. You know, it's, it's nice for them. Yeah. Pieces like Symphony of Psalms, of course, sort has of a it. darkness about it. Maybe the Symphony of Psalms that was at the back of my mind. Yeah. 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 I sort of, but I, don't, yes, I, I never thought, oh, I'll make it like Symphony of Psalms, but I think that No, might, yeah. there's a dark and yeah. austere kind yeah, of colour to that piece. Yeah. 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 I always find it fascinating when composers talk about other pieces because you have to be influenced by things. Yeah. I mean, you know, it'd be crazy not well, to be. Well, influence moves in two ways. I mean, the, the, uh, there's one form of influence in which you filch an idea. <laughs> you know, you say, people say, oh, I'm influenced by that. No, you're, you're not. Stealing. You're stealing. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have an idea. That's how you buy something else. But then there are influences that come under the door. Yeah, they're like the draft yeah. in the door, yes. yeah, yeah. and um, so they're not absolutely conscious. In no, that sense. but you've yeah. mentioned Bach, you've mentioned Stravinsky, yeah. Dowland, maybe, and is that well, yeah, because significant I, I, in your yeah, I I think that Dowland um, um, was the end of something and produced that sort of um, melancholy, which um, which ended the Elizabethan. Uh, mm, which yeah. sort of went through into Purcell uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to a degree, mm. but then uh, went, and yeah. it, 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 it and uh, it's a sort of lyricism that it died w with that music, mm. Mm. and um, and and it's not the same lyricism that's in in Schubert. No, it's a different yeah. melancholy. Yeah. 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 Just jumping forward a few centuries from Dowland, how do you see yourself in a line at all from English composers? Well, you just that I, I, you don't feel arrogant, much of a, of a connection. Arrogantly, I used to think that, but it, it, I, I, it was the one thing I 
didn't want to be was an English composer, but that was a youth. That's when yes, youthful, youthful yeah. thing. But in on the continent, they're always on about me being English. Know, that, you know, know. Oh God, it's not part of not part of uh, my music is not part of this said uh, of European modernism. Well, no, I mean it's yeah. not a criticism. No, but, but it, it, it just an it's observation. There, mm. It's an observation, and I, I, it, there again, it's if if there's some I don't know you define what is in. I'm not really no, sure course, what they no mean. mean. No, I just wondered if you yeah. had a f sense of any progression from yeah. those that went before you well, from this country. But you wouldn't be able to find it. But but in Dowland, I, mean, I think that that an earlier music. You jumped to the Elgar, Tippett, Vaughan Williams generation completely. Yeah, and that's another issue. That's a different thing altogether. But that was the sort of music I self-consciously didn't, didn't want, want to be to part write. of. Yeah, you see, yeah. Elgar was a Germanic composer. It, mm -hmm. You know that it's associated with English countryside is nonsense. Yeah. It's through association. I think I've done quite a bit here. I sort of like a suit. How many years? Well, I've been, I think about 18, I think. It has a vibraphone, xylophone, and marimba, and then a collection of woodens, rocks and things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just fumbling. And then the last thing I wanted to just us because this is you know mm. the last supper and as mm. you've said you know mm. monks came to your performances of this and yeah. priests and so on what is your how does religion relate to this and to you and your life and from your childhood and how did it evolve oh, or dear, that's a difficult is that, one is that yeah. too much to ask well it's not too much to ask I, it's too much to answer <laughs> um I was brought up in, in uh, what were they called? Methodists. Methodists. I was yeah. Methodist and, and baptism, Baptists. We yeah. had Baptists. I never knew what they were or what the difference was mm -hmm. and, and that. But um, my mother was religious, but never, never, if I didn't go to church, there was no problem with that. Mm -hmm. and, um, she did. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. Can I pick something? Take what you want. Yeah.